Hello! In this video, we are going to use Octav to understand a bit more about the problem of a deflection of a beam. More specifically, let's say we have a cantilever beam, or a beam that is rigidly attached to a wall and has a free end. If we apply a point load at this uh, point here, which we are calling A, this beam will deflect in this manner, in grey, and this point A will come to be this point A prime. If you go back to the theory of beams, you can show that this deflection that we're calling here V can be given by this expression, where P is the point load, L is the length of this beam, and E is the Young's modulus of the beam, so it's related to the material of this uh, structure, and I is the cross-sectional moment of area, or moment of inertia of area. Uh, let's say this beam has a rectangular cross-section with, uh, with B and height H, and so the moment of inertia of the area is BH cubed over 12. So let's go ahead and start our script to calculate this uh, deflection V. So we'll need the length of this beam. So let's say we'll start with a 2 meter beam. Uh, we also need the material for this beam. Let's say that's steel. So we have 200 uh, gigapascal of uh, Young's modulus. Let's say we have a load on this beam, this point load, of 2000 newtons. And we also need to define the geometry for our uh, beam, or the dimensions of the cross-section. So let's say it is a 20 centimeter uh, wide beam, with a height of, say, 5 centimeters. With all that, we can uh, calculate these two expressions. First, we'll need to calculate the moment of inertia of the area. So we have B H cube over 12. And with that value, we can calculate the deflection, which will be then P, which is the load, times the length cubed over 3 times E times I. If we go ahead and run this script, we give a name for it, so something like this. And again, we'll be able to calculate this value of the deflection. Here it's giving us um, 12 millimeters for this deflection. But let's see now how this deflection changes as we increase or we vary the length of this beam. So as we've been doing before, instead of having a fixed parameter, let's have an array of values for this uh, parameter. Uh, let's say we want to understand how this deflection changes as the length goes from 1 to 3 meters in small intervals. Remember that as we have now an array of values, we need to have this scalar operation for the cube of L. So we want each element of L cubed before we do the uh, division operation. And now we can run this script and check that we have uh, chosen uh, 21 values for the length. So this array here has 21 values, which is showing here. And consequently, we have 21 values for our deflection V, which is also showing here. One value of deflection for each value of length. And then we can go ahead and plot this result. So we can plot uh, L on the horizontal axis and V on the vertical axis. We can give a color for this plot. And if we run this script, we can see that as our length increases, our deflection increases to the power of 3, which is quite obvious from 
our expression here. But now let's say that apart from trying to understand what happens to the deflection as the length increases, let's say we also want to understand what uh, part the material of this beam uh, has on this uh, deflection. Let's say we would be able to vary our material from uh, a value that is 50% less and 50% more from this base value that we have here. So that means we're not using a single value for our Young's models anymore. We want to have an array for it. And we want to have an array based on this uh, initial value that we have. But we want to uh, have an array that goes from half of this value, uh, from small increments all the way to one and a half this value. So 50% less to 50% more. Now, we have two parameters varying. Uh, so we cannot use directly this structure that we've been using here in lines 9 and 10. We need to do this variation uh, one step at a time. First we vary one of them, then we vary the other. So let's say we can create a for loop here with a counter that uh, we can give any name for that. I usually give a name C and the number of counters I have. And this will go uh, for the length of this uh, array that holds values for young modelers. And inside this for loop we need to calculate uh, our deflection for each value of this uh, of this array of young modulus. So instead of using a single value here, we're going to use uh, instead of using a fixed value here, we're going to use a value that varies depending on which iteration we are in this for loop. So that would be our basic idea for this for loop. However, uh, check that this uh, expression for the moment of inertia doesn't depend on the variation on the Young's model, so it can actually go outside of the loop, like so. And inside the loop we will have this variation of uh, Young modulus. For each one of them, we will calculate an array of values for deflection based on the uh, different lengths that we are discussing here. So for each value of E, we are calculating 21 values for V. And now we want to put all this into a figure, but check that if we do the plot only uh, after the for loop, we will only show one figure, which is the last value, uh, the last array of values of V, which is related to the last value we chose for E. Uh, and that's not really what we want. We want to have different lines for each value of the Young's modulus. So we need to m include this plot inside this uh, for loop something like this. However, we want to create very uh, many lines inside the same figure and the way we can do that in Octave is to issue the commands figure which will open a new figure and the command hold on which says we are going to plot a bunch of things in the same figure and this bunch of things is these are these lines here and after we plot all this, we can issue the command hold off and then go on giving the labels uh, that we want. So here we still have the uh, length and the horizontal axis and the deflection V and the vertical axis. If we go ahead and run this um, script, we will see that we have uh, 
six different lines which are related to the six different values that we have for the Young's modulus and as it is right now it's a bit difficult for us to uh, directly understand which line corresponds to each value because they are all the same color so let's do a final trick here which we can create an array of values for the uh, the parameter here for the plot command which sets the color of this graph so let's do something like this we create an array of now characters it's not a numerical array it's an array of characters uh, which can also be called a string and inside here we'll put different values for the uh, color for the lines we're gonna have so we need six values because we have six different va uh, colors or six different lines and I just happen to remember that there are a few different uh, codes for colors like so so this is black red green blue magenta and cyanum so with this array here in each iteration of our for loop we can use a different value inside this colors array something like that so the first line will be plot with black color the second line in red the third line in green and so on so we'll have when we run it a figure like this so we know that this is the first value in our array of Young modulus so that is our smaller value for Young's modulus so that's quite clear that as we increase the Young's modulus our deflection is lower and an interesting thing to check in this sort of um, figures is that the influence that for example the Young's modulus has on your deflection changes as the length changes so you might see that going to a much uh, higher value of uh, E which might translate to a much more expensive material might not have a strong reduction in your deflection and another way of showing these results of two parameter variation uh, instead of using many lines inside the same figure we could use a 3D surface or a grid to, to show the same results so let's see how we can do that in Octave I'll create a new file based on this one by simply save file as and I'll give a different name here in deflection 2 for example and in this new file we're going to use a slightly different structure so there are a few things here we're not going to use anymore so for example this array of color names uh, we don't need anymore and also these commands here for the figure that we had uh, we're not going to use anymore either so what we want to do here is instead of creating one array for each iteration of our um, for loop we want to hold all the values that we are calculating in a two-dimensional array or you can think of as a matrix and we can do that by remember that for each value of our uh, Young's modulus E we create one array for values of V now instead of creating these values and superposing uh, another array in the next iteration we want to hold all these values together in one uh, variable which will be now a two-dimensional array or a matrix so what we're going to say is that for each row of this matrix all the uh, values that we have will come from this array that we are calculating for each element of E we'll not use this plot command anymore because this plot command is for two dimensional plots we'll use a different uh, command now which is 
for example the mesh command and the mesh command will hold then three values the array of values for our um, x uh, axis another array for the y axis and then the two dimensional array or the matrix for the elevation or for the z axis so in this case we can use the mesh command with um, the array of uh, length, the array of Young's modulus and the matrix of deflections. If we go ahead and run it we'll see our 3D figure with uh, the variation on Young's modulus here, the variation of length here and the result of this variation on the deflection which will be here in the z-axis. We can improve a few things uh, on this figure. First, you notice that the surface was quite coarse. Uh, that means we have very few points uh, on these arrays. So we can increase the number of points in these arrays by diminishing the distance between consecutive points. So for example, instead of having point 0.1, we can have point 0.05. And here, instead of having point 0.2, we can have 0.05 as well. So we will end up with arrays with more uh, elements than what we had before and consequently that would change the size of our array or matrix V as well. So it's good practice for you to start from an empty array before populating it in a for loop like so just in case you end up with different sizes and these are incompatible. Also one thing that we didn't put before uh, are the labels. So we've seen before how to input our X and Y labels. In this case they are just L and E. And as it is a 3D surface we can also uh, use the Z label which in this case will be value of the deflection V and if we run again we'll see that we have a much smoother surface which is a bit easier for us to understand what is going on with the uh, variations in the Young's modulus and in the length and the result in the deflection here. So there you go that's how you can do a two parameter variation and check the results in a 3D surface using Octave.